The most important thing to know about procrastination is that it is not a character flaw. What it is, is a habit. And because it's a habit, we can change it. I can teach you how to change it, and we're going to do that in this video right now. So let's talk about procrastination for a minute. It's not laziness. It is fundamentally fear. As human beings, we are programmed to avoid things that are potentially aversive. So that includes anything that might be out of our comfort zone. If it's different, if it's potentially painful, if it's challenging in any way, anything that takes us away from the space in which we feel comfortable, we're programmed to say, I think I'll put that off. I think I'll do that later when I have more information. I think maybe I won't do that at all. We are pre-programmed to seek pleasure and safety and stay away from pain and danger. So for example, if I have to make a decision between choice A and choice B, I might get stuck, unable to make a choice because I'm afraid that I might make the wrong choice. Similarly, getting started on a task that I know is going to be onerous can be difficult because, well, it's unpleasant. And staying in the space I'm in is less potentially unpleasant than I think the task is going to be. So the problem isn't knowing what to do. Nearly everybody who wants to change something or do something or feels like they're procrastinating knows what they need to do, whether it's get in shape, whether it's change a relationship, whether it's be more productive at work, do their homework, whatever it is, they know what they need to do. And if they don't know exactly what they need to do, they can look it up online, they can ask a friend, they can uh, buy a self-help book. There's a million videos out there, they can, they can get information on what they need to do. So the problem isn't knowing what to do. The problem is figuring out how to get it done. And it's really easy to get stuck in that space of, I'm lazy, I'm a procrastinator, it's my fault, I'm stuck, I'm a loser, and none of that stuff is true. The reason we get stuck is because we're human. And human beings are built to get stuck in a place where they think. We think a lot before we do. And we think before we do because from a Darwinian perspective, meaning evolution, it makes sense. You think before you take a step because it keeps you from taking steps that might be dangerous for your well-being, for your safety. Maybe you need to gather more information. Maybe you need to be careful before you take a leap forward. So as I said, we're built to think carefully before we take action. Unfortunately, in the 21st century, that's not always the best action. That's not always the best way to get things done. And in fact, it can wind us up back in this procrastination loop. So what we do as human beings is we feel, then we think, then we act. Feel, think, act. So example, I'm feeling unhappy in my job. I start thinking about leaving my job, finding a new job. I spend the next bunch of days, weeks, months, years maybe, thinking about what I need to do to get out of the job. I might uh, do research, I might look at other jobs, I might think it to death <laughs> before I take action. Feel, think, action. The think may take all my time. I may think it so long and so much that the action gets postponed and postponed and postponed until it doesn't happen. The myth is that I will somehow be able to suddenly be motivated to take action. In other words, I'll suddenly one day feel 
myself into a place where I will take the action. Motivation, unfortunately, is a total myth. We don't suddenly wake up and have that motivation within us. It doesn't just pop up out of nowhere, or at least it's incredibly rare. That motivation comes from taking action. So it's the other way around. Rather than feel, think, action, we have to learn how to think, act, feel. That's the trick. And this has actually been proven over and over and over again by neuroscientists, psychiatrists, psychologists, and all sorts of cognitive research. We can actually act our way into feeling differently much more easily than we can wait to feel our way into whatever action it is we want to take. And most people have experienced this. For example, if you sit around waiting until you feel like going to the gym, you probably never go. But if you get up and go, it's remarkable how your feeling state changes once you are there. So again, rather than feel, think, action, the goal is to switch that around and learn how to think, act, and feel. I know a lot of you are probably saying, yeah, right, easier said than done, which, which, which it is. However, that's the point of this video. I'm going to give you a specific plan for how you can do this. And it's really simple. It doesn't require big changes. These are little tiny changes. And what happens is if you practice over and over again, eventually this becomes just second nature and you do it automatically. As we go through this, I want you to remember the fundamental um, idea here is that you are going to act your way into feeling differently. I heard someone say once that it's not that we are procrastinators, uh, it's that uh, pro we procrastinate. So it's a way of not labeling ourselves. And by the way, I procrastinate. And so this is something that I use all the time and it is very helpful to me. So this is built on something called the three minute rule, which I did not make up. It's been around for a long time, but I've sort of just expanded on it. And there's been a tremendous amount of research done on the three minute rule, which is the idea that if you do something, tell yourself you're gonna do something for three minutes rather than taking on like, the, like saying, I'm gonna go for a one hour run, it's, you're much more likely to actually do it. And, and, and most of the research shows that about 98% of people can do almost anything for three minutes. So it's been a well-researched tool and it works very well. I've expanded on it a bit and here's, here's what I do and what I think works very well and has worked very well for many, many of my patients that I've worked with. I call it the triple three. One is identify the project, and that simply means identify whatever it is that you're wanting to get accomplished. Usually that's the big thing. So it's get in shape, finish the project, work on my relationship, whatever the big thing is. Usually that's the thing that's keeping us from getting started because it's so big, right? So that's number one, identify it. Two is break it down into small bits. So you're going to break it down. Perhaps if it's getting shaped, then it's breaking it down. I'm going to take a run uh, 30 minutes a day or go for a walk a half hour a day, whatever it is. You break it down. Number two, it's very important to break it down into really doable chunks. If you find that you've broken it down later on, those pieces don't work for you, make it smaller. Number three is to identify the starting line. So in this case, it might be getting out the front door. All of this can be done from the very moment from where you are sitting right now. So one is identify the project. Two is break it down into doable chunks. Three is identify the starting point. And again, that means from right this moment where you are right now. 
That's the first set of three. Then the second set of three is that you're gonna actually count down from three. So three, two, one. When you reach zero, so three, two, one, when you finish that, you're gonna go. You're just going to go without thinking. No thinking, no excusing, no nothing. You're simply gonna go, and you're going to go directly to that starting point, and you're gonna start. The third three is that you're going to do whatever it was at your starting line. You're going to do it for three minutes. So even if your goal is to take a walk for 30 minutes every day, today, three minutes, three minutes, that's it. So again, I'll review, there's three steps, there's count to three, and then there's three minutes. And you can apply this to anything of any length in your life. Three steps, count down from three, and do that thing for three minutes. Obviously, if you wanna go more than three minutes, you can, but the idea is that once you've taken a physical action, that physical action will change how you feel that's where motivation comes from. Motivation comes from moving your physical body and that generates a change in your brain chemistry, which then generates a change in how you feel, which generates the motivation that you've been looking for all this time. So short version of the triple three, the, the way to remember it is three steps, three counts, three minutes. But if you can't remember any of that, the very simplest thing to, re thing to remember, the only thing you really need to remember is count down from three and do it for three minutes. If you, if you don't remember anything else from this entire video, when you get stuck and you find yourself procrastinating, remember, it's not about laziness, it's not about lack of motivation, it's generally about fear. And being stuck is about overthinking and being stuck in a loop, thinking, 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 either trying to make the most right or most perfect decision, or about trying to avoid certain consequences, or avoid certain experiences. And when we count down, we are not allowing ourselves to think. We're simply blocking out all of that thinking. And when we tell ourselves we're just going to do whatever it is for three minutes, we're taking a lot of the pressure off. Three minutes, most people can withstand most things for three minutes. So we alleviate a lot of the fear by alleviating a lot of the pressure. So if you can't remember anything else from this video, try to hang on to three counts and three minutes. It goes a long way when you're feeling stuck. In other videos, I'm going to talk more about breaking down big goals. A lot of people who procrastinate have a tendency to um, look at goals and projects and, and things in their lives as if they have to do the whole thing all at once. So I'm going to go from A to Z rather than I'm going to go from A, not even to B, but to A and a half, little tiny steps at a time. And that alone can cause overwhelm in the human brain. We're not built to do everything all at once. And that causes us to feel like retreating. It's very scary and it's overwhelming and it creates in and of itself a lot of procrastination. It's a natural hu human response to overwhelm. It's a, a stress coping mechanism. Procrastination is a way that we as humans cope with the world being too much. So I will do another video where I talk about how to break things down into manageable pieces. But for now, that's it. Thanks for listening. I am Dr. Schwartz. This is Psych Talk, and I'll see you next time. 
Hi guys, thanks for listening today. And if you like this video, please like it and subscribe so you don't miss anything. Also, please take note, I have a new journal link in my community tab. If you're interested in checking that out, please do so. I welcome all suggestions on future videos or things you guys might be interested in hearing about. Please send them to me via email or on my comments below. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time.